Hi folks, so today's my last video of the year and I want to thank you all for supporting me throughout the year, it's been incredible. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button now and get the alert bell, you get these videos as they come and it helps me out big time, keeps the channel running. Today I want to talk about playing the clavinet. I've got a modern version here called Vintage Vibe Vibernet. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. It's an electroacoustic instrument in the inside You've got strings, much like a guitar, and pickups. And you can switch between pickup settings to get different tones. So I'm going to show you the different tones you can get out of a clav, what effects to use with it, and then how to approach playing one. Because you can't play it like you play a piano. It's just going to suck. You know, it's a very different instrument. Needs to be approached in a bespoke manner. So let me run you through the basic features of a clav. There aren't many. You've got pickups, which you can switch between. Same as guitar pickups, they give you different tones. On this one, it's slightly different from the original, but it's the same sort of concept. You can hear that, they're all giving you different ranges. Some of them more middly, some of them are more full. This is a good full tone one. And this one also has a free band EQ built in, but the original doesn't. And over here you have a mute, which is the same sort of effect as when a guitar player uh, puts his right hand over the strings lightly, so it dampens the sound. So let me show you how that sounds. This Vibonet also has a touch wah feature, but the original doesn't. Um, people used to use t wah pedals, which sound great on clavs. Sounds like this. You can adjust the sensitivity of it, which gives you different tones. I find the sound of the clav generally does benefit from a bit of amp simulation. It just gives it a bit more balls. So I've got a little sans amp sort of plug-in on here, so I'll show you what that sounds like. Without. You don't want too much distortion because if you put too much in, you lose the transient, you know, you lose the attack of the note. And that's what clavs are all about, really, is getting that punch. Um, if I'm using it in clean mode, you know, sometimes I'll have it completely clean. Sounds like this. Sounds cool. Um, but I do like it with a little bit of d dirt all the same. Uh, let you hear the difference there. So this Vibonet's got a, a Tiwa Touchwa built in. I like to use it as uh, as if it was a guitar player, really. So like I'm going to show you with the the montage. I'm going to be playing chords and vamping a bit, and I'll just be playing a little funk line on the Tiwa. Um, and what I do is I tend to syncopate, you know. So I'll land before a beat or after a beat, you know. So you get that kind of funky feeling rather than me always hitting the one. You know, rather than one, two, three, four, I'll be one, two, three, one, two, three. You know what I mean? So I'm not always landing square on the beat. I'm landing somewhere in between the beat. That makes the music feel faster, makes it feel funkier. Um, anyway, I'll show you how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm playing the clav just clean, might normally be in a chordal setting. Um, got a nice clean sound here with just a little bit of reverb. 
And I'll tend to play sort of what I'd say pecking type chords where I'm you know, really short, percussive, think of like a percussive instrument. Uh, so let's get a drum machine going. So my right hand's playing the sort of pecking parts and the left hand's playing bigger notes. And as usual with my playing, I'm sort of bouncing left and right a bit and that makes the rhythm feel more funky. That kind of action will make something quite funky. It's very simple, it's just that the left hand is preceding the right hand by a sixteenth and it just gives it that kind of funky rolling feeling. So you can hear that I'm playing dynamically, most notes are short and I'm accenting some with longer notes and it just gives it a real feel. So two things that really play nicely together are a clav and a wah. So I've got a wah hooked up to this now. We're all familiar with that sound, uh, but there's a couple of things to mention about it. You do sometimes hear people playing a wah just in time with the beat. So they'll, for instance, be playing like... Which is cool, but um, you can get a bit more finesse into it than that. If you think of a wah as a tiwa that you can actually completely control because with a tiwa it either goes up or it goes down in terms of the filter but obviously with a wah wah you know you don't always have to be going up and down with the pedal all the time you can keep it static in any point and then you can think of it as a filter it's like having a great filter um so for instance um guitar players often do this i know rob in jamiroquai sometimes just leaves the wah halfway open and, and it gets a particular tone. So in a clav, like if you, you can do the same thing. You know, you get a particular tone. If you've got it open, it's brighter, obviously. And it's always thinned out a bit when it goes through the wah. It gets rid of a lot of the bottom end. Um, so it's fun to play with those tones. You know, you don't always have to think of it just going up and down. And also, it's good to sort of practice opening the wah at a particular point, you know, so that to create the effect you want. So let's say I want it to go wah, you know, open, then quite tricky, you know, it takes a bit of getting used to. And then if you want it going the other way, also. You see what I'm doing there? I'm just opening it on one note and then closing it again quickly and it's giving it it's shaping the sound much like a filter on a synth. Let me show you how I sort of play the wah with a bit of a beat. So yeah, it just takes a bit of practice, but you can really get a lot of expression out of it. You can really make it talk. Um, you know, it's quite cool when you're doing a rhythm thing to sometimes keep it closed for a lot of the time. And then you just get these sort of bouncy notes. So you can see there, I'm just accenting a couple of the things and the rest of it, I'm keeping the, the wah closed. So you get that sort of muffly sound and then really adds to the rhythms and the dynamics of the thing. Another quite cool way to use the clav is, is on long notes. So you get this sort of... Sounds nice. Uh, let me put some more reverb on. Wow, 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 wow,
And then for a more of a rock and roll vibe, you can use the wah with distortion. So I've got a Sans Amp plug-in on here. You get so much more variation, you know, with the when you're playing funk with the with the wah. And you know, when you want to play runs, you can you can alternate open and close. You get some great vibes. The clav also sounds peachy through um, the wah and a spring reverb, then going through an amp um, for these sort of rock and roll kind of 60s harpsichord type tones. I really love the sound. I want to show you now the mute. Um, it's a different effect again. I really like it cranked through a guitar amp simulation with a spring reverb again. It just gives you a real retro vibe to it. It's, it's got so much flavor. <laughs> just can't get that out of an emulation it's just so vibey and so alive and organic well i hope you enjoyed that folks i want to wish you all a merry christmas and a happier new year next year all the best <laughs>